Hi, it's Steph. And if you've been around my channel for a while, you know that I absolutely love winter sewing. But this year, I'm cheating. So why is it that I'm cheating on winter sewing? Well, as much as I do love winter sewing, and I still plan on doing quite a bit of it this year, I'm also going to do a little bit of indoor seed starting this year. Now, why is that? Because I have been winter sewing for so long now, there are some things that I've learned over the last several years that I want to change or that I want to improve. And I'll give you some examples of that. The winter sewing process, if you're not familiar with it, is growing um, or creating a small greenhouse out of a recycled container. And then you plant your seeds in here, you put them out in the weather, and you let the elements take care of the seeds. They will get watered, they will get sun, and when the time and temperature is appropriate for that seed, it will start germinating and growing. So it is a very hands-off process once you do the initial setup and put your seeds outside to grow. So I love that. The only thing is that certain seeds I found have taken a really long time to get going. And by the time that I open up my containers at mid-May at some point, um, they are still really small seedlings and they take a really long time to either produce fruit or to um, bloom. A couple of examples of that are peppers. So I have grown peppers with the winter sowing method for a few years, but I have found that when I open up my container, the pepper plants are still really small. They only have maybe two sets of leaves on them and they take until August before they start producing peppers. So that is one example. The other example is certain flowers that bloom and marigolds specifically. I have tried to grow marigolds with the winter sowing process for a couple of years now. And that is another one that takes a really long time to get blooming. And ideally I would have my marigolds starting to bloom at some point in May or towards the end of May when I go ahead and plant out my peppers and my tomatoes and other vegetables in my vegetable garden. Now marigolds serve a purpose. They're supposed to deter pests. And if you have an unprotected garden area, they can also keep things like deer and rabbit away from your crops. So because marigolds take a really long time to get going with the winter sowing, I decided I was going to start them indoors. There's also a variety of foxglove that I'm growing this year called Dalmatian peach. That is a foxglove that will bloom on a first year. Typically foxgloves, many varieties are biennial, which means the first year you would start the seed, you would grow foliage and the plant would develop roots and leaves. You would plant that out leave it alone, and the following season, it would bloom for you. Well, there are a couple of varieties like the Camelot and the Dalmatian peach that can bloom first year. So for that reason, I also wanted to get those going inside so that they could potentially bloom for me earlier in the season, maybe at some point in June. So that is the whole reason why I decided to try a few indoor um, seeds this year. Now, I have not indoor seed started in several years. I looked through my phone and I tried to find footage or pictures that I might have taken and the last one that I found dated back to somewhere in around 2017 or 2018. So it's been a while that I've been strictly doing the winter sowing method. I have also done a lot of direct sowing and once the weather warms up at the beginning of May, I will also start some seeds in some trays, but I will leave them outside on my patio wall and let nature take care of them. So some of the things that I had to consider about starting seeds inside. So the first thing I had to do was decide where am I gonna set up my seed growing station? And I've decided on here in the basement. And how many lights do I need? How many shelves do I need? And so forth. So I've figured that all out. I did have to purchase some lights. Um, it's my birthday this month. So I treated myself to a set of grow lights. And I also really like these burpee trays. Um, I used them for the first time last year to start some seeds outside when the weather warmed up. I started some zinnias, some cosmos, some sunflowers in these trays. And what I really loved about them was that they had this silicone bottom, which made it really easy to pop out your seedlings and cause minimal root disturbance. So I will be using these to start my seeds. Now, uh, I also bought some of these for myself. So I treated myself to some grow lights and to five new burpee trays. Um, I had three from last year and I added five more. So now I have a total of eight and I really like these trays. But let me share with you um, what seeds I'm actually gonna start with the indoor seed starting and which ones I will be using the winter sowing method for. 
For indoor seed starting, here is my list. I will be growing forget-me-nots. The reason I'm starting those inside is because they're also a spring blooming flower. And if I have any chance of seeing them bloom this season, I'm going to have to give them an early start. So I will be starting forget-me-nots inside. Marigolds. I have three varieties of marigolds that I'm going to be starting. Um, Foxgloves, the Dalmatian peach variety, because I also want to get early blooms on those. Snapdragons. Snapdragons are also a cool flower, a cool weather flower, and one that I have tried growing with winter sowing before. And they germinate beautifully with winter sowing. Problem is that by the time I plant them out at the mid to end of May, it starts to warm up within a few weeks and they never really do anything. So um, in the fall, they will start to bud up and bloom a little bit, but they're never really vigorous. So I'm going to give these a try and start them indoors and see if I get any blooms by starting them a little earlier. Sahara Rudbeckia, Feverfew, another couple that are new to me this year, and Pansies, another cool weather flower. Um, this is a spring bloomer as well, and I have never grown pansies from seed. I heard they can be a little challenging and take a little while to get going, but I bought a really pretty variety called Black Devil, and it has really dark black, probably a really deep purple uh, flower. So I'm excited to try those. Straw flowers, another one that I've grown with winter sowing before, also um, either had somewhat like spotty success or they didn't germinate um, or took a long time to get going. I want to say that I grew the silver rose last year and of all the seeds that I sowed, I only ended up with two or three plants. And then by the time I transplanted them, they got taken out by slugs, so I never got to enjoy them. So I'm going to try those inside um, because I think I'll have a better chance of success that way. And two new things that I'm trying this year, coxcomb. They almost look like, the only way I can describe it is they look like a brain. Um, I'll show you a photo of them. And I think they're really cool. So I'm going to give those a try this year. And amaranth. I have grown amaranth a couple of years ago. I bought a, um, a start that I had purchased at a roadside plant stand. And it was called uh, Love Lies Amaranth really pretty. It had like a fuchsia flower. So this variety that I'm going to grow is called Aschenberg and it's also really pretty, has dark foliage. And because I'm going to grow a lot more cut flowers in my vegetable garden this year that I'm going to call my cut flower garden for the season, I decided that I would grow a few of these because I think they would look really pretty with things like zinnias, cosmos, the fever few that I'm growing, as well as with the dahlias as we get later into the season. So that is my list for indoor seed starting. I have about 10 seeds that I'm going to be starting today in February. And for winter sowing in February, I have six varieties that I'm going to start. And that is Canterbury Bells, which is another flower that I have read is biennial. So I'm going to start that as a winter sowing container. They need a little bit of cold stratification. And then when I plant them out, I am not expecting to get blooms this year. If I do, it'll be a bonus, but I'm expecting those to bloom for me next year. So that will also be the first time that I'm growing Canterbury Bells. Ladies Mantle. I grew Ladies Mantle last year. I purchased the seeds from Swallowtail Seeds. They are a perennial and they are really pretty. They have beautiful foliage and then you get these sprays of yellow chartreuse flowers. Um, and so I planted out my seedlings last year and I really liked them and I wanted some more. So I purchased another pack of seeds and I'm starting some more with winter sowing because they did really well. Lots of perennials will do great with winter sowing because in general, most perennials will like that cold cycle and need cold stratification in order to germinate best. So I had great success with ladies mantle with winter sowing. So we're going to do that again. Onions. Onions are another cool season crop that do really well with winter sowing. I've had great success last season growing onions with winter sowing. Now my onions, uh, the first year were really small. The second year they were a little bit bigger. So this year I'm going really all in on these onions and hoping that they do well for me. I think where I failed last year, which even though I did get onions, they were a little bit smaller, is that I didn't fertilize them as soon as they started to grow a bit of green growth above the soil. So that is what I'm going to do different this year. I'm going to make sure to fertilize my onions. But something to know about onion varieties is that depending on where you're located, um, you're going to either grow long day variety onions or short day variety onions. I'm in a northern region and for me, I'm going to grow the long day onions. And the variety that I'm going to grow is called um, Yellow of Parma. And it was the same one that I grew last year. You get quite a few in the seed packet, so it lasts a while. So we're going to go with those. 
I'm also going to grow another cool season crop, lettuce. So I'm going to grow us some salads in some winter sowing containers. I have two varieties of lettuce. I'm also going to grow arugula, which I really like. It has a nice spicy um, flavor and adds a little zest to your salads. And parsley, which is another um, herb that does well in uh, cooler temperatures. And I actually have a question for all of you. I will be growing some sweet peas for the first time this year. I purchased these two packages. I have sweet pea mammoth salmon cream and sweet pea heirloom mix. And my question is, should I direct sow them outside in spring once chance of frost has passed? Um, can they be sown a little bit before your last frost date? or should I start them indoors first? And I have been saving some um, recycled toilet paper rolls because I have read that these are a good option to start your sweet peas. Now, from what I understand, sweet peas have a really deep root system and they don't like to be disturbed. So sometimes you can plant them in something like a root trainer, but because I don't wanna buy any root trainers, I've just been saving these and I'm either going to direct sow them outside or I'm gonna start them in these rolls. And if you do start them in these rolls, do you plant the whole uh, roll into the the soil or do you slowly peel these away from the um, seedling? Let me know. Okay, so I have my trays, I have my containers, I have my soil. This year for seed starting, I am going to use, this is the soil I've been using for the last year and I've really been enjoying it. It is the coast of Maine. And so this is the coast of Maine potting soil. Um, when you start seeds, you have the option of starting with a seed starting mix or you can start with potting soil. Now the seed starting mix is really light and fluffy and it's really helpful to germinate seeds, but there is no nutrients in it. So as soon as your seedlings germinate, very shortly thereafter, you're going to have to transplant them into some potting mix. So I have decided to skip that step altogether and go straight to potting mix. So that is what I'm going to use for my seed starting trays. And that is also what I always use for winter sowing is always potting mix. Because you're going to set up these containers and put them outside, the seedlings are going to be in here for some time. They need those nutrients to get going and growing. So always potting mix for your winter sowing. So let's go ahead and get started. If you're newer to winter sowing and want to know how the process is done, or if you just want a refresher, I did create a five minute quick start guide that I will link in the description to this video, as well as in the pinned comment. When I create my winter sowing containers, I like to have sort of an assembly line. So my first step is to prep all of my containers. I usually start with the drain holes and then I cut the container across the center, leaving a hinge so that it will make it easier for me to tape back up the container once I'm done. Then I pre-moisten my soil and I fill all of my containers with soil. The next step is to go ahead and put all my seeds in the containers. And then you wanna label. I make sure to label twice. I put a tag inside the container and then once I get it taped back up, I will go ahead and also write what I'm growing on the tape as a label. I use a garden marker, which is really helpful because it doesn't fade or wash off when I have my containers outside in the elements. My next step was to prep all of my trays for my inside seed starting. I recently purchased this soil scoop and I've been really loving how much soil I can move from the bag to a container or a bucket without losing any because the bucket or the scoop rather is so deep. So I think it's gonna be really helpful this season for moving soil. Once you're ready to sow your seeds, you wanna read the instructions on the back of the seed packet. It will tell you how deep you need to sow your seeds in your trays. Most of the seeds that I picked this year were really tiny, so they just required surface sowing, which means you're just going to sprinkle the seeds on top of the soil, and that is it. Generally, the larger the seed, the deeper they go. Once I was done sowing all of my seeds, it was time to water. Now, because these seeds are so small and I didn't wanna risk knocking them around, I didn't do any overhead watering. What I did was I filled all of my trays with water and I bottom watered. I let all of the seed trays kind of sop up the water and water my seedlings. And here's where I'll be growing my seedlings indoors this year. Now these shelves came about because George and I started to organize and clean our basement, which had become the dumping ground and was quite messy and disorganized. So when I went online and I started to research some shelves, I wanted to find something that would be dual purpose, something that I could use for a few months out of the year to grow my seedlings. And when it wasn't in use for seedlings, I could use it to organize and store all of my gardening items, which no longer fit in the shed, as well as other things that we have in the basement that we need to organize. So when I was looking for shelves, I found this one here that had these 
wire shelves, which would be perfect to hang grow lights from. And I recognize the brand, Vivor. And as a creator, we often get offers for things in our email, and I remembered the name. So I went back and checked, and sure enough, Vivor had reached out to me months ago, offering me some product to include in some of my videos. Well, at the time, I had declined the offer because I didn't need anything. But at this point, I was interested in these shelves, and when I reached out to them, they were kind enough to send me two of these shelves to use for both my seed starting and for organizing the basement. If you're looking for any kind of organization for your shed, your garage, uh, your basement, or even just a seed start, uh, these are going to be a great option. They are powder coated steel. Each shelf has a 400 pound capacity. It is six feet tall, four feet wide, and two feet deep. These came shipped in a compact box, but they did weigh about 65 pounds, so you might need some help to get them in the house. We brought them into our basement and we did an unboxing. You will not need any tools to put these together. Vivor actually provides you with a mallet and a set of gloves for the assembly. Now, these don't have any nuts, bolts, or screws, which is great because if you ever need to adjust your shelves or take them apart, you will just need that mallet to take them apart and move your shelves. There is like a sliding system, so that's all you do to adjust the shelves or to take this apart. So very easy assembly. Um, George actually worked on this while I made dinner, so it took him about 30 minutes a piece. So in an hour, he had both shelves assembled. So I want to thank Vivor for sending these out to me. I'm putting them to great use. And if anyone is interested in some shelving, they did provide me with a discount code for my viewers. I will go ahead and put that in the description of the video as well as the pinned comment. And when you go ahead and check out on Amazon, you would just enter the promo code. I put my lights hanging on some S hooks with this chain that I purchased at the Home Depot. So it's going to make it really easy for me to adjust the height of my lights as my seedlings grow. When they're first starting to germinate, you want the lights pretty close so that your seedlings aren't reaching for light, causing them to be leggy. And as they grow, you will need more head space. So then you can go ahead and start moving the chain up and allowing your seedlings more space. I've already bottom watered my seedlings. I filled the trays at the bottom with water and I'm gonna let them kind of sop up that water. But as my seedlings grow, if they start getting a little bit dry, you can also mist them. And I bought this pump sprayer right here. It's a hand pump sprayer at the Home Depot. You just pump it on top to build pressure and then you just use it. It's like a mister and it works really well. All right, next step is because these didn't come with a humidity dome, I have cut some sheets of plastic saran wrap and I'm gonna go ahead and cover these to offer my seedlings some humidity, which will help them germinate. And once they germinate, I can remove the plastic wrap. And because I knew I was gonna use saran wrap as a humidity dome, I did not use any of my plant tags that would stick up because then it would make it difficult for me to put my saran wrap on here, right? It would look like I was pitching a tent. So instead I just used some painter's tape along the edge here and it, I think it's going to work out really well. I went ahead and I labeled the variety that I'm growing in each of these rows as well as the date that I started them in. And um, this is also a good way not to lose my tags because that happens sometimes. So I might even like this method better. Well, I got my makeshift humidity domes on my seed trays, and I also went ahead and set a timer on the plug to my grow lights. I knew that I would probably forget to come down here and turn them on, so to set myself up for success, I went ahead and I set a timer. They are going to be on my grow lights for 16 hours a day. I have set the timer to come on at 5 a.m., and the lights will shut off at 9 p.m. So that is it for my seed starting for February. I got my indoor and my winter sowing seeds started. Next month in March, I'm going to winter sow some tomatoes and a couple of herbs. And I will also start my peppers inside under the grow lights. And then by April, I will start my warm weather annuals, such as my zinnias, my cosmos, and my sunflowers using the winter sowing method outside. So that is it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And thank you so much for spending your time with me and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up button and please consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos. And we'll see you soon.